Hi everyone. If you've been following me on Instagram, you know that I've had the opportunity to work on this 200 square foot studio apartment in Venice, California. Space is very limited in this apartment and using a Murphy bed will make it possible to have both a queen size bed and a sofa. Given the budget that I had, buying a Murphy bed ready-made wasn't really an option. So I had to do the DIY route, just using the basic tools that I had. So today I'm sharing with you the highlights of building this Murphy bed and how I customized the inside to make it a cozy hideaway bedroom. I didn't know anything about Murphy beds when I started on this project. So I watched a lot of YouTube videos to see how people were building them. Some people built everything from scratch, including the hardware, and others use Murphy bed hardware kits. I chose to go with a Murphy bed hardware kit to save time and then to build a cabinet myself to save some money and so I could customize it to reflect the raw, rustic, industrial style that my friend slash client is looking for. Now when it came time to choosing an actual Murphy bed kit, there's so many choices out there and I decided to go with this one from murphybeddepot.com. They have a huge selection of Murphy bed kits and of course of ready-made Murphy beds as well. So they're worth checking out if you're thinking about a Murphy bed. Regardless of which Murphy bed kit you end up getting, there's a lot of steps that need to happen. Starting with getting the materials and then cutting everything. I usually have wood cut when it comes to plywood or large sheets of material at the hardware store. But with Murphy beds, everything has to be super exact and precise and the hardware stores don't always cut exactly like you ask them to. So I didn't want to go that route. I just wanted to take the cutting on myself to make sure that everything was exactly the right dimensions. It's also critical to have all the cuts be perfectly at 90 degrees because if the cabinet isn't square, then the lift mechanism won't be able to work properly. Because I was using a circular saw to make my cuts instead of a table saw or a track saw, I spent a lot of extra time making sure that my cutting guide was exactly at 90 degrees. All that extra time was worth it though because in the end, all my cuts were good. A small detail that's a very important one um, that I had to do was to cut out a notch at the back of the side panel and that's important because the cabinet needs to sit flush against the wall and since this is a rental apartment I couldn't take out the molding like some people do. I used three sheets of three quarter inch birch plywood for the cabinet and because I was going to stain the wood I did a lot of sanding to give it a nice smooth finish. I did underestimate the amount of time that each step was going to take um, it ended up taking me maybe two to three weekends to finish the whole thing, but that's going to vary for everyone. It just depends on your setup, your workshop, your tools. Though not necessary, having a real workshop with all the woodworking tools would definitely have helped speed things along. It also rained a lot during this build, so I wasn't always able to work outside. And having to work in a tiny space with little room to maneuver can be challenging at times, especially when you're building something this big. Before putting everything together, I highly recommend printing the instructions, reading them, and also watching any video that the manufacturer of the kit may have put together. I know this sounds obvious, but there's so many details and moving parts to a Murphy bed that doing this will save you many mistakes along the way. The instructions that came with my kit included very helpful tips, like drilling a pilot hole with a smaller drill bit first before drilling the larger holes for the bolts critical to do it this way so that the holes line up perfectly between the cabinet and the lift mechanism. How you install the lift mechanism really depends on the kit that you're using. Mine has springs that I needed to install but some kits use pistons instead. These are a bit easier to install and they don't tend to make as much noise when the bed is in use but one downside is that unlike springs the pistons are visible when the bed is down. Typically, cabinets are put together with dowels and glue or pocket screws and glue. I didn't want to do it that way because this Murphy bed is going to have to be disassembled when it's time to move. Instead, I chose to skip the glue and use angle brackets and screws that I ordered with the Murphy bed hardware kit. Once the cabinet was against the wall, it was the moment of truth to see if the cabinet was square and I was really happy to see that it was. It's really important to do this before you attach the cabinet to the wall studs. 
which is also something that's necessary to do before installing the front panel, which is pretty heavy. Too heavy for me to lift, actually, and it was nice to have friends help out with this step. The last things to do were just to put the bolts on and the legs, and that's basically it for the Murphy bed build. Most Murphy beds are only used occasionally, but this Murphy bed is going to be used every single day as the main bed, as the bedroom essentially of this apartment. So I really wanted to give it a warm, cozy feeling on the inside and, and really make it feel like its own little room when the bed was down. To do that, I came up with the idea to cover the exposed white wall with a wood panel and to build it in such a way that I could also incorporate two lights. I only had about an inch of space to work with so that it wouldn't interfere with the bedding and the mattress. But by using one by twos and quarter inch thick plywood for the structure, I was able to make it work. I started building the panel by laying out the one by twos and then attaching the plywood, making sure that it was square and that there was a quarter inch thick lip for the narrow panels to rest on. I also recessed the screw holes so I could cover up the screw heads with wood filler. For the lights, I used a simple LED light kit from IKEA. The metal sheets serve two purposes. They help reflect more light, but they also bring in that industrial look that's the inspiration for this apartment. I finished the wood panel with the same stain that I used for the cabinet, and I used some metallic paint to transform the wood where the wall sconces are into more of a metallic finish. Last but not least, I accented the wall sconces with some black. The wall sconces were still missing a cover of some sort. To make them, I chose to use wire mesh and make a frame around it using wood edging that I had left over from the cabinet. A little metallic paint made everything look like metal, and then by using sheet metal screws to attach the covers to the panel, it really brought everything together to give that industrial look I was going for. After that was done, I needed to pick an accent color for the inside. I tried many different things. I tried blue, I tried red, and nothing was really fitting with the mood that I was going for or the space. And then I got this inspiration when I was watching a sunset and I thought, wouldn't it be really fun to include that element since this apartment is right close to the beach? And that's when I got the idea to use this really warm glow of orange inside the cabinet. I'm really happy with how that came out. I went with really simple bedding that wasn't too fluffy or thick because you don't really want that with the Murphy bed. Since the plan is to put some artwork on the front of the Murphy bed, um, instead of going with a traditional handle, I used a nylon ribbon to make a makeshift handle that can easily be hidden away. All the wires for the wall sconces are hidden behind the panel, so nothing is visible. Except for one wire that's for the light switch. I camouflaged that using this hollow plastic tubing that I found at Home Depot. To make sure that the panel stays in place, I added a couple of screws from the sides of the cabinet. I'll put links in the description below to all the tools and supplies I used, the Murphy bed kit I used, I also wrote several articles that go into much more depth about this entire project, so I'll put a link to that in the description as well. The next phase of this project is going to be building shelving on either side of the Murphy bed for storage, then building a sofa that's going to go in front of the Murphy bed. I also started to tackle the kitchen, which will have lots of renter-friendly upgrades and DIY projects. You can see sneak peeks on Instagram, and if you don't want to miss the videos when they come out, this little video here from YouTube helps you figure out how to make sure that you get notified when I publish a video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.